How's it going, team? This is the Brown Man, and today we are going over El Hefe. We are going over Old Ash, or Leader Ash, as a lot of people call him. He is a really dope character. I, I like what he does. I like what he does. He has some recent buffs. We'll see how things go. Leader Ash has four unique perks. We're going to go over those really quickly. Show up and blow up. Activate. Generates a small range explosion. Deals a little bit of ba uh, damage. A lot of balance bar. El Hefe. Your aura increases both types of damage. Ranged in melee by 15%. Your fear is in, in the fear resistance of anyone within the aura by 20%. Which means they take 20% less fear from, you know, jump scares, traps, even just walking around, etc. Old friend. Start the match with a chainsaw. Explanatory. Self-explanatory. And El Jefe Grande. Enhances your aura's effects when you perform a finisher or dismember an enemy. Really good. In uh, some of the recent patches, one of the recent patches, they actually increased the dismemberment on the chainsaw. Which gave him a little buff. In terms of that. Some people like to run the saw gun. The saw gun actually has high dismemberment. So if you're out there shooting the saw gun and not having much damage into the gun itself, you'll deal balance bar, you'll deal dismemberment, and you can actually you actually have a chance of dismembering a, somebody, triggering El Jefe Grande. El Jefe Grande increases the aura, the, the aura effect by 100%. So that means it's the aura effect. The aura effect is 15 so, Grande, for a set period of time, is 30%. So, while El Jefe Grande is active, the damage from range and melee is buffed by 30%. And you can chain that. So, you go saw gun, shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay, this person is... Got, there's got a dismemberment. That's El Jefe Grande. Shoot, shoot. Another dismemberment. El Jefe Grande again. And then you do a finisher. El Jefe Grande again. So it gets it gets really crazy, it gets really nutty. And you can you can have El Jefe Grande trigger multiple times. And one of the things you can do with El Jefe El, El, El Jefe is that you can actually shoot and target sometimes the Elagos elites, their resistance to guns, but as you get the dismemberment from the high rate of fire of the saw gun, especially if you're accurate, you'll get dismemberment, dismemberment, finisher. So you can get up to two or three El Jefe Grande's triggers on on the elite unit of Elegos, which is interesting. Um, in order to get finishers, some people, a lot of people go for uh, seeing stars, so that way you you have the finisher chance. Um, devastating force I go into typically for because once again I'm gonna be using the chainsaw, doesn't run out of ammo. Last word I go into. Because that last chainsaw hit. Um, hits are really weird in this game. So each consecutive hit has a 10% stack to it. Heavy attacks do double damage. So it will be 100%, 110%, 120%, 130%. It's a four hit combo. Right? So the first one is 0, 10, 20, 30. Right? Or you do heavy attacks. So it will be... 200, 210, 220, 230. And then this adds, last word adds an extra 15%. However, some people can put this into cardio. They can put it into deep pockets if they want. They can put it to artful dodger to save some extra. They can put it into echoes of the aura. All up to you. But this is my preferred build. I, I generally, some people run tougher than hell. I don't run tougher than hell on El Jefe. I've, uh, I like to dodge, duck, dip, and dive. Dodge, wait, dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. There you go, five Ds. And I typically like to go this route, increasing the range. So with El Jefe Grande, I want as many people as possible to get the effects because I'm I'm running this. I'm running him as kind of like as, as a support, a support leader. I run deep pockets ammo, so that way the hunter has way more ammo. So, if I can carry, for example, 50 handgun bullets, now with this, I can carry 65. And that creates a big difference 
for the hunter. The hunter doesn't really run out, even for long gun. If most people run, what, 30, now I can run 45. I can run, you know, close to pretty much what the hunter can do, can carry themselves. They, they have, act as an extra ammo stash. Um, I can still help. Your aura persists even if you are bleeding out or become a soul. This is great. This is great for if something happens and you go down. You can still help. Your aura, your El Jefe, will be around for the objective. Or your El Jefe will be around for the book, etc. Echoes of the aura. The retained effects after you're leaving aura for a short period of time. I'm typically always with my team. I'm not really rocking something like that too much. I'm not really investing in that. Fast forward. This is a perk that is great. So it reduces the duration timer for objective events. Some demon units can actually ex extend the event timer. So the longer it takes, the more that 15% carries, right? 15% of one is a lot less than 15% of 100, for example, right? So this also helps when people go down. Maybe you can't pick someone up, right? But that person going down is making the objective go slower. This right here, fast forward, will actually mitigate for each person that goes down. It'll mitigate how much slower it will go. So this actually stops the demon from buying themselves more time by downing a survivor. So now it's like, hey, you know what? You can actually leave someone on the floor a little bit. If you don't have a Henry, if you don't have certain things, the demon might get EXP. But the demons often tend to camp bodies on the ground and poke someone out and get and, and snowball off of whoever's down in the objective. Right? So with fast forward, you can actually leave someone on the ground because that time is being compensated by this perk. Some people go damage. So they'll go something like... Uh, Like, hey, what if I don't want to do all that? I'm going to go into... Maybe they want to resist fear. I want to be anti-possessed. Some people, they'll do something like... They'll run tougher than hell. So they'll say something like, hey, you know what? This, that's mandatory for, for this. You take less damage. You're a little bit tanky. You survive a bit more in these holdouts. Some people go for that. Um... Typically, what I see with El Jefe's it will be pretty much maybe something like that. Or they'll do something like... They'll go for... Massive of Influence. Massive of Influence strengthens the effect of your aura. It adds 20% of your aura. So it'll add 20% of the 15, 20% of the 30. Um, and that would, be, that would be pretty solid. Those are some of the builds that I generally see on El Jefe's. I just run a more aggressive build because that's how I like to run El Jefe. I like to push objective. I'm an objective pushing person. I, I love balance bar. Someone can also just go into a max balance bar like that. There's, there's, no, there's no shame because balance bar is pretty important, right? Stunning them at the book, stunning them. Uh, it mitigates damage. That's why I said I, I love Annie. Annie does it a little bit better, but Ash on his own can do some decent balance bar as well. Stunning mitigates the damage, so because once again they can't attack your team if they're stunned, <laughs> right? So that's a, a less shemps that you need to do or need to use rather. And that's it. That's it for El Jefe. If you guys learned something, if you guys like something, you know, like, share, subscribe, etc. Next week we'll be going over. Another character, and that will be a surprise for next week. Yo, be safe, stay hydrated, and have a good one.